teach steadily from truths of the Bible in the book of Romans. But today, I felt it necessary for two reasons that we look into the prophetic word. <clears throat> God put in my heart something about the prophetic word about a month ago. And also, uh, there is a reason why I want you to know the real nature of prophecy. Hallelujah. I am trusting in the Lord to make prophecy, the subject of prophecy, as simple as I can. Praise the Lord. Those of you who are getting ready for ministry, please know our call is to speak the mysteries of God as simply as possible. And our example is Jesus. Jesus, truths, Jesus taught the truths of the Bible through parables. Very, very, very simple parables which people can understand. The Pharisees never understood it because they were always looking for deep truths from Jesus. Jesus gave them deep truths but as parables. So it's our challenge to keep things as simple in the Lord as possible. Hallelujah. Prophecy. Prophecy is a subject that has destroyed people. Prophecy also is a thing that has lifted up people. Hallelujah. It is necessary. The Lord wants the prophetic voice to be restored in churches throughout the length and breadth of the United States of America. From today, I want the churches to pray. I want you to pray. When the prophetic voice is uttered in a church, it simply means that God has spoken. When God has spoken, things begin to happen. And God uses us to speak His word. God's word, when spoken, determines, determines everything that happens in a nation. Many of us are concerned about the coming election or what America is going to be. Have no fear. Absolutely, God is in control. People are busy looking down on America. You know, it's time to fall. America's time is over. Hold on. God is not over. This nation has always been blessed through people who God brought into the nation. The 1600s and 1700s, the Puritans came. The land was blessed through them. Whoever has come, the Lord has used them to build a nation. He is no man's debtor. God will still lift this nation up. Hallelujah. Amen. And the prophetic voice, the Lord has put it in my heart, the prophetic voice, the voice of the Lord must be spoken out Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, not only in our church, but every church. When the voice of the Lord is snubbed or pushed out, nothing will work. Man's voice by itself cannot do anything. But God's voice can do everything. A prophetic voice is the voice of the Lord. We come on a Sunday morning not to see how good the worship is. It is good. How charismatic the pa pastor is, he is. But there is a high, higher level. A level where God begins to speak. Hallelujah. And in this regard, I want the church to know more than the right doctrine. Now, I'm not talking about false doctrines. More than the right doctrine. Make sure Sunday after Sunday in your church, the voice of the Lord is speaking out. I know prophets who speak powerfully. They may not know the right doctrine. I know prophets who may be living under the Mosaic law, but still they may be speaking the right word. God is more interested than the right doctrine that you speak, hear, and obey the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you understand that? I, I need to serve your mind a little bit this morning. Our minds, all of you are above average intelligence, very powerful, intelligent people. Praise the Lord for you. So some of you need to know, not because of your doubts, when God speaks, that speech is greater than any doctrine. Jesus came. He was the full voice of God. When Jesus spoke, things began to change totally. The Pharisees had a doctrine. They had a doctrine of holiness. That never served the purpose. Jesus came and spoke. He divided history into two. Jesus spoke and it was finished. Jesus spoke and the church came into being. God is calling us to speak the words of Jesus. That the fullness of God may be appreciated by us and known by us in our generation also. Hallelujah. The prophetic voice is God speaking in his church. The prophetic word is God speaking through you. The prophetic word is what you require to heal the sick, cast the demon, raise the dead. What you need is the prophetic word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let's look to the book of Second uh, Peter chapter 1 verses 19 to 21 quickly. 
let's get some instructions from the word of god Most brother, I want you to read verse 19, not 9. It was, I said 9, it's not his mistake. 2 Peter 1, 19. I want you to read that. Yes. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes, 20 and 21 too. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Peter is speaking about the prophetic word here. He's speaking to a church or group of churches. And he says, you have the prophetic word. You already have the prophetic word. You have in your heart a torch light. You have in your spirit a lamp. Which will guide you in the affairs of life. Till the Lord Jesus Christ, the light fully shines. Those who understood, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The prophetic word has been taken away from most churches today. I want you to look into the book of Revelation chapter 2 verses 5. Those who came in the first service, you know how the Holy Spirit is leading the word in the second service. It's going to change. It's not like in the first service because we need to serve the hearts and minds of the people. Those in understanding say amen. That is why it is a challenge to speak in different uh, services and still stand with the Lord. Some people may think, why is Cindy speaking the same thing? Because it is not I, but the grace of God that is in me that is speaking to you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at this. The Ephesian church had fallen. They had fallen from grace. And the voice of the Lord, the prophetic voice of the Lord was speaking to them. If you go to Revelation 2.1, You can see the prophetic voice. Look at the prophetic voice here. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Verse 2. I know your works, your labor, your patience, how you, can, you cannot tolerate those that are evil. And you have tried them, which they, they say they are apostles and are not. You have found them liars. All these things are known by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he appreciates them. But you see verse 3. Verse, you have borne your patience for my name's sake. That is the name of Jesus. You have labored. You have not fainted. Verse 4. Nevertheless, look at this. I have somewhat against you. What? Is that so important? Is that so important? I say, people, look at all the things God is doing. They are doing for the Lord. I think they're a wonderful church. Look at the list again. Come back. Come back. Look at the list of things. Jesus knows their works. He's happy. He knows their labor, which is another thing. He's happy. He knows their patience. He knows how they can separate themselves from unholy people. He knows... That he, they have tested people with the spirit, you know. And uh, next verse. He knows that they have born, they have had patience. And for the name of Jesus' sake, they have labored and not fainted. I said, what is wrong with these people? They're so good. If we did not have discernment, we would say, what a church. But that's not the way God looks at the church. Hallelujah. People of God, remember, he always looks at the church as he wants it to be. He always loves his church. He sees his church as they are, as he wants them to be. And when he sees it doesn't match, he says, hey, there is something lacking here. You need to love me back. Is loving God so great? I want to tell you something this morning. Loving God is the greatest Amen. thing. Anything, nothing else matters. Can you lift your voice if you will and say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Faith working through love. 
If you ask me what ministry is, ministry is faith working through love. Imagine you go home, you're tired, and let's say one of your spouse, husband or wife, we don't care who it is, is busy preparing the food. And you come back home so tired and just imagine your spouse says, take, eat if you want, I'm busy. How many of you like to eat that kind of food? I don't. My wife doesn't do that, praise the Lord, but I don't. No one, none of us like to have food if it is given to us with a disrespect. Hallelujah. But we would love it if people were to give us not ordinary food, just substandard food, but they, if they give it with love. How many of you think you'll take it? Oh, get back. God is moving you. Love. You're going to be filled with love today. You are being filled with love today. That's what my Lord told me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When all else. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When, love lifted me. You know what, what lifted the prodigal son back? Who can tell me? What a confidence he had to come back to his father. Because he was loud throughout. The father had the right strict discipline at home, I'm sure. But greater than the discipline was love. He said, I love you, son. And when the son came back, did you see the father never hurt him even once? I knew you would do this. I knew you would do You were always like this. The problem is with your mother's people. The problem is with your father's people. From the day you were born, you were like this. God doesn't say that. Come back, I love you. I'm glad you came back. Hallelujah. It's because of that love, the, the son knew the father's love. He came with such boldness. We read that he doesn't bother about what the elder brother says. He doesn't have to go to the elder brother. He um, comes straight to the father because there was love in his heart. Church, please understand this. Not the right doctrine, but the love of God sustains us. The knowledge in our spirit that God loves us. I had to go through a little bit of crisis yesterday night from about uh, 10 o'clock in the night till 2 o'clock in the morning. I never had such, such, a, such kind of a crisis in my life. I heard of things happening to people outside my family, but you know. <laughs> and then that one thing kept me. His love, I know. God won't let me down. Church, I want you to know something. This is, we are family. I want you to know something. You know, this is the heart of God. This is not my greatness. This is the heart of God. If something were to happen to some of you somewhere, you know, it can affect. Maybe you think you are insignificant. You're not. Every one of you here, so loved and cared for. You know, if something were to happen to you, services may go on, ministry will go on, but you don't know how important you are in the kingdom of God. But God is good. He's such a good God. Hallelujah. Know this, you are very important here. Some of you may be visiting, but today you are very important because God sees your time and your season and has brought you here. You are precious in the hands of a living God. Give me a minor. Give me a minor. Come with me. Stop that. And come with me. Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hands. And through the eyes of faith, I can clearly see God is good all the time. He put a song of faith in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkness night, 
His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. We were sinners, all unworthy, still for us He chose to die. Filled us with His Holy Spirit, now we can stand and testify that His love is everlasting and His mercy. They will never end. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. To the His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good. God is good all the time. You ask, Lord, why do things happen to me? Answer, because he loves you. Lord, why me? Why am I like this? Why was I born like this? Why do I have a flat nose? I'm not talking about myself. <laughs> Why am I so tall? Why am I so short? Hallelujah. That's the way it fits my father. He has pleasure in the way I am. Why was I not able to study? Because God is good. Why don't I understand everything? Because God is good. Everything is because God is good. Hallelujah, because he loves you. Oh, go up. This is a song for somebody. When you know this song is for somebody, I want you to stand up. We're not done with the ministry. Go up. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways you cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. I told you. I told you. This is from the Lord, not from me. We're going to sing that. It's a, this is prophecy. It's encouraging some hearts of some people. <laughs> I, I didn't plan this, people. But the grace of God. God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to his side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way By a road in the wilderness He lead me Rina. And rivers in the desert will I see Heaven and Molek come out, they fail, but it'll just still remain. He will do something new today. God make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. 
He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Oh, make close in Jesus' name. Father, anoint them with love and strength for a new mission. No new ministry birth in the heart through you. Every guilt, I now bind it in Jesus' name. Cast out guilt and declare victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Take the mic and come and sing with me. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With work for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Don't go from there. Church, this is the same song that Moses sang when he took the people of Israel through the desert. Moses had a new covenant heart, I know. David had a new covenant heart, I know. So let's sing that. Hallelujah. God has a way. Hey, you want to stand up, my brother. Why don't you do that? I want to publicly remind you of the prophecy that came over you. You're like a Joseph, remember? God is going to bring a large group of people from your country. God is going to use you. Remember that? He will prosper you. Hallelujah. Something is happening. It's a prophetic. I sang that as a prophecy. Oh, Jesus. Amen. God is opening doors. I have a testimony, you know. We showed you how a deaf boy was able to hear. And a dumb person was able to speak. Remember that? But do you know the story behind it? Somebody brought me then said, Pastor, remember, this fellow cannot hear. I asked, Lord, what can I do? The Lord told me something. It's not about you. It's not about your mind. It's my power. And it's my love. It's my love. We have not understood it wholly. You know, many of us are mindy people. Means we try to live with our minds. God did not create us to live with our minds, but to live with the spirit and the life of God. I'm asking God, Lord, open a door that we can go and worship. And he is, whatever your situation is, right now he is opening it. In the spirit, when he opens in the spirit, you'll see it in the natural. Whatever it is, Open in the spirit. God is opening for you a new door. In faith we sing. God will make a way. Sibyl, stand for his sake. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Holy closely to his side With love and strength For each new day He will make a way He will make a way You know, we, we don't want to speak any other language during English service. But today, out of love, I want to say this for some people who understand Malayalam. Karthava namakku vadi torakkuma naivida paadun. Hallelujah. God is opening a new door. He is. Oh, two weeks ago the Lord said breakthrough. I am seeing breakthroughs. Is anybody seeing breakthroughs in your life? I am seeing breakthroughs. I am seeing breakthroughs on Friday evenings now. I am seeing breakthroughs on Saturday evenings now. I am seeing breakthroughs in the life of some of the pastors here. I am seeing breakthroughs. Yes. Correct. Yes. Amen. So in faith, can you sing this song? This song came saying, God will make a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tina, God's love for you is not less than the love he has for any of the children here. He loves you the same. Be sure about it. Hallelujah. Sing this one more time and then go along. Sing it for yourself. 
God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Hallelujah. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul, he has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Church, we're going to sing that song prophetically. You are praying for you are praying for something specifically. Are you? Something you have not told, told to us. Specifically, it is done. You wouldn't tell us that. You tell us some of the things. But you wouldn't tell us this. Still, you have been praying for something. It is done. But, but for the sake of the faith of the church, did I reveal the right thing? Are you sure? Don't worry about me. If I didn't, I have to go back to the Lord to be sharp. But is it right? It is true. It is done. It is done. Hallelujah. So church, we sing this song because we know it is already done. So by faith, what is my desire right now? A new place. A church. Oh, thank you, Monsi Brother. He said, Andavare. That is exactly my heart right now. Lord, open away. Hallelujah. So whatever your desire is, tell, sing this because he has done it. Hallelujah. Ready? This is a prophetic act. Now, we want a new place. We want a new church place. We want people to come in there. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He has done great things. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless this holy name. Oh, oh bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within Blessings of the name. He has done great things. Hallelujah. We got the church. We got the church. We got the church. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He has done great things. Oh, he has done great things. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. People know the prophetic act. We began teaching you prophecy, but know the prophetic act. What we are doing is a prophetic act. Hallelujah. As we were praying, some of you stood up. When we worship the Lord, how many of you knew in your sense, in your spirit, it is already done? Yes, Sibel? Really? Lift your hands. Praise God for you. Now because you believe, because the Lord has confirmed it to your spirit, keep on speaking that. Did you get the dynamics? God told me, He will do it. I have a confirmation in my spirit. Therefore, I use my mouth to speak. 
Hallelujah. Isaiah 60 is coming to the church today. Isaiah 60, as you stand, let's declare this by faith. Isaiah 60, this word, this chapter is for, given to us. Let's read it together. Church, rise, shine. For your, let everybody stand now. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see and all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then you shall see and flow together and your heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as a doze to, the, to their windows? Surely the isle shall wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from afar. Their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord your God and to the Holy One of Israel. Because, because, because he has glorified thee, glorified thee, glorified thee. Keep moving. And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls. And the kings shall minister to you. Okay, go, 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 go. Six, ten. Now look at this. Def, for in my wrath I smote thee. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Go. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. That the kings may be brought. Go on. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yes, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Go forward. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to the beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I'll make the place of my feet glorious. Hallelujah. The sons also, church, listen to this. The sons also of them that afflicted you shall come bending upon thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Sion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Whereas thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breast of the kings and shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Hallelujah. For brass I will bring gold and for iron I will bring silver. And for wood, brass, and for stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. Hallelujah. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But you shall call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting life and thy God, thy glory. Go down. The sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw thyself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Hallelujah. The people also shall be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. Is that it? Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is a prophecy again. A little one. Come here. Come here. Quick. A little one. You too. A little one. 
If you have a little one near you, put your hand on them right now. A little one. 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 Put your hand on somebody. Yes. A little one. A little one. A little one. Where is Joshua, little one? Where are all the little ones? A little. I see the power of God on you, sister. In Jesus' name. Glory. Thank you, Lord, for bringing her into this tent. In Jesus' name. A little world shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. The Lord will hasten it in his time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, children. You know, I remember Georgie brother once prophesying about this fellow. Georgie brother, you remember? Yes, he remembers. He saw a vision about this guy. His future is so big. All of us. All right. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Move on, Betsy. That's it. That is chapter 61 also. Let's read one verse. Oh. <laughs> That's fine. She'll be up. She'll be up. The Spirit of the Lord is upon my heart. I will heal like Jesus healed. Come on, this church, this is your promise. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Come on. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a clap of rain. He has done. He has done great things. For he.